Good morning, everybody. Just going to continue to worship. I love this uh, new song that I'm listening to. Um, no other name can heal my heart. No other name can save me. No other name can restore. No other name can save me. No other name can restore. Hmm. No other name but yours. I'm just going to continue to let... I'm, I'm enjoying this, so I'm just going to worship for just a minute while we wait for more people to get on. Good morning, Lou and Carolyn. Hope we're having a good morning today. I get excited whenever um, new worship comes out. And I start listening to it. It was good. Um, I have a hard time not listening to it, so I don't know if any of you have that problem, but uh, I can't get enough of this song. So if you're familiar with uh, Dante Bo, this song is called None Like You. It's a new song. It's amazing. And um, I just been spending time with it today, but I love the, uh, I love the lyrics of this song. Anyway, great song, great morning. I'm going to get into this devotional this morning. Here we're in Acts chapter 15. And um, <coughs> I got a little bit of a, I don't know my allergies are just being weird today. So um, I got a little bit of uh, eye stuff and nose stuff. And um, it seems like it, I've been not taking my, my, uh, anything for it, my allergies all year and I've been paying the price for it but I'm like no meds no meds so I, I'm just becoming one of those people right now but uh Acts chapter 15 before we get into it I'm going to pray and just kind of open in time of prayer and then we'll get into Acts chapter 15 Lord we just thank you for the opportunity we have today um to get together even if it's online we thank you for technology Lord that allows us to be able to connect from a distance, Lord, and be able to get into your word and have time of prayer of agreement together. Uh, we just thank you for all of that. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here with us and you're in every single room that is watching. Um, Lord, and I pray that today you'd help us to uh, draw closer to you today, that we would be more intimate to you, with you today than we were yesterday, that we draw closer, um, have more revelation, have more understanding, and that we would just um, just have a great, great uh, connection with you today, that you would teach us your ways, that we would walk in your truth today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nasal saline can help allergies. All natural. I might have to try that. So Acts chapter 15. Um, so in Acts chapter 15, the first part of the chapter, we're, we're not really going to hit on. I'm going to hit on later on. But the, the chapter begins with, um, and this is, the, I know the Act, book of Acts is full of all kinds of like miracles and signs and wonders and healing and prayer that leads to amazing things and just all kinds of Crazy stuff, but um, there are also times that we see, and this is this is kind of important for us because, um, as normal people, um, sometimes we feel like we can't be in perfect. We have to be perfect, and you have to live up to the standard. And um, but even the New Testament church had their issues; they had their own struggles within. And this Acts chapter fifteen is part of that. You see them disagreeing; that they've disagreed on this topic multiple times, not just once, but. Um, you know, Peter had and, and had to wrestle with you know preaching to those who were Greek and those who were not Jews, and they went back and forth, and, and now here we are in the same situation. The church is is kind of arguing on whether those who are being saved 
who are Greek should have to be circumcised or not. And so they're battling in Acts chapter 15. They end up having a council come together to talk about it and discuss it. And then there were those who were, what I love in this part is that you have um, those who were Pharisees spoke up who are now believers. So you know, we see Pharisees who come to Christ and those who were of the religious mindset. And you know, a lot of times, I, I think this is true for all of us, that sometimes when we give our life to the Lord, uh, matter of fact, all the time when we give ourselves to the Lord, you know, it's um, we come over into the kingdom from a life of sin and being in the world. And sometimes there's carryover, right? Sometimes we bring some of our habits. Sometimes we bring some of our ways of thinking. We need the Lord to change the way we think, right? So we come over with some of that baggage. And um, I, I like I like it to, uh, you know, we're, we're becoming, we're going from being orphans to being heirs. And sometimes we have the orphan mindset that comes over with us because we don't quite fully grasp the idea that we are joint heirs with Christ and that we are, and so we don't fully understand and grasp what that is. So sometimes we bring over our past. So in this passage, you have those who are Pharisees who've given their life to Christ, who are still believing, hey, we need these people to be circumcised. They should be circumcised. So they spoke up and gave their thoughts on it. And 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 so there's back and forth, back and forth on whether um, those who are Greek, those who are getting saved who are Greek should have to be circumcised or not. Ultimately, the decision came um, because they felt like, why would we put on that extra that yoke on them, the same yoke that we couldn't even carry? Like the carry, we tried to carry the the law, and it was impossible. We needed Jesus, so they decided, well, how come we can put that that same yoke on those who are Greek? And so what they decided to teach them is that we're going to send them a letter. And that letter is going to basically state, these are the things we want you to do. Don't defile yourself with things from idols. Don't um, be caught up in lust. And, and uh, those. So it kind of gave them these certain mandates. But but things that we know, um, Bible says that we should be living. That's how we should live. And um, But they didn't touch the circumcision thing. They said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to put that yoke on them. So that disagreement was there. And they had, this, they had the, the one thing that we can learn from this is that, again, um, no matter where who we are, we're going to bring things from our old life into the into our new life, and we have to learn to navigate through those things and remove those things and allow the Holy Spirit to remove them. And there's going to be discussion. There's going to be disagreement because of it sometimes. And they had disagreement, but they worked it all out. And the Bible says literally in, in Acts chapter 15, literally that they came of, of one heart, one mindset, and they made this decision together not to put this yoke of of religion on or of the law on those who were Greek who are giving their life to Christ. So after all of that happens, they decided, they, they sent Paul and um, Barnabas. They went out and they began to preach and they began to, to share. Um, and later on, as, as they're working together, um, I'm going to go down to verse number 36, because this is where I'm really going to sit today for a little bit. Verse number 36 of Acts chapter 15. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's return and visit the brothers and sisters in every city in which we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. So in other words, like we've, we've, we should do follow-up, right? Every church should have a follow-up. If people were connecting to our ministry and we don't see them for a bit, it's been a little bit, we should follow up. We should see how they're doing. And, um, and that's what, in essence what they're doing. Let's go back to them. Let's go find them and let's, and let's go back and minister. So Barnabas wanted to take John called Mark, which was his cousin. So along with them also, but Paul was of the opinion that they should not take along with them this man who had deserted them in um, Pamphylia and had not gone with them to uh, to the work. In other words, there was a time where um, John, who was called Mark, had deserted them and decided, I'm not going to go any longer on this mission with you guys. And so um, Paul, was uh, uh, the, his mindset was, you know, we just need to move on without him. We need to keep doing what we're doing. Whereas Barnabas is like, let's give this guy a second chance. Let's work with him. And this is what it says in verse 39. Now it turned into such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left after being entrusted by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he was traveling through Syria and Sicilia, uh, I mean, uh, Cilicia, Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So, you have these two people who preach together, work together, serve together, uh, and they loved one another. And so they're working together, and they had such a, a minor, really, it's, it's like, I want to take this person with us. And Paul's like, I don't want to. I want to take this person with us. That person deserted us before. In one, you know, one case, you have Barnabas, who's related to John called Mark. So he's got this extra little connection there. But they began to disagree. Now, what I want to touch on today, and I think it's extremely important for all of us, 
um, because we're seeing a passage where people are not perfect. They're fighting, they're arguing. Um, In one instance, they worked it out, and in this instance, they didn't work it out, at least right away. Um, they separated and went on doing their own thing. And Barnabas is like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I want to do. So I'm just going to take um, J- uh, John called Mark with me. Since you don't want him with us, I'm just going to separate from you and take him with me. And then Paul picked Silas and they went separate ways. I, I saw this phrase. I was doing some reading yesterday. I saw this phrase and I think it's actually really good. It says, the best of men are still men at best. The best of men are still men at best. I think that's an awesome quote, and it's absolute truth for every single one of us, and it's the truth for them here in this passage. Paul was an amazing man, probably the most influential man of the of the New Testament, um, regarding you know after Jesus, obviously, but um, he was so influential on the church and on people. Yet he was a, merely a man. He wasn't perfect. He didn't always make the right decisions to do the right things. I know we like to think he did, but even he said, why is it that I can't do the things I want to do and I do things I don't want to do? He's imperfect. So the best of men are men at best. Um, the best, even even when we're at our best, I'm still a man. I'm still flesh in the flesh. I still have this battle that I'm in. I still fail sometimes. I still mess up. I still make mistakes. Um, what I want to talk about is uh, we can have disagreement, but we can't have disunity. Um, and that's important because you can disagree with somebody, but still be unified with them, still be willing to work with them and serve um, in, in, on a mission. Um, later on in passages we see throughout the uh, letters that Paul wrote to the churches, you see Paul mention Barnabas on multiple occasions. We don't see them actually connect again, but we see him mention him. And every time he mentions them, there's with warmth and there's with um, as if though there's um, his good memories and good times. Um, I personally believe that when they separated, even though they had sharply disagreed, they separated um, but did not disunify. Um, they, they both went on about their business, and the gospel spread in, in two places now instead of one because of where they went. I think sometimes when you disagree with people, you can try to work it out. You can sit down and discuss it like they did earlier in this chapter, and you can work out those disagreements, and you can come to one mindset. There are other times where you can't. doesn't mean you don't love each other. doesn't mean you don't care about each other. It just means we don't agree on, on what's coming, what's next. And so sometimes there's separation that happens, and it sometimes it's a good thing. Um, it's good that they separated because they went on and they preached. Now, um, what we also know is that later on, even though Paul did not want John called Mark with him, now, later on, we see in, in different passages in Galatians and different places where um, Paul actually requested John called Mark to work with him. And he actually went and he worked with him on multiple different occasions. And, and so um, that he was beneficial to his ministry um, is one of the things that Paul said. So even though we don't see Paul and Barnabas work together again, as far as connection, um, we see Paul mention Barnabas and we see Paul work with the person he didn't want and the reason why they separated to begin with. So I, I believe sometimes you can separate from somebody you disagree with yet still have this, a love for them and a heart for them and not be in disunity. It's better to, it's better that we just go and do the work of the Lord separate in that situation. We're both serving God. We're both on the same mission. We're both doing the same thing, but we just see things a little bit differently. And so because we can't come to a, a resolution, we, we separate and do that. Um, as long as there's no Ill, Ill feelings in your heart, as long as there's no bitterness or anger in your heart, um, then it's okay to do that. Um, I actually have a story that I read today that I thought was actually really cool. And I'm going to read right out of this article. Um, and it, it's actually really neat about a couple people in uh, in, 19, in the 1700s um, during the, the First Great Awakening. And it was a, um, kind of a good example of this, of what we're reading. So here's what it says. First, let me tell you, I'm going to give me a light. First, let me tell you a revival story from the First Great Awakening in the 1700s that shook two continents. The awakening was spreading from England to a nation soon to form the United States of America. What God did during that time became the DNA for the language used in the foundation documents of the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. uh, Though the revival was great, it was not without controversy. Two great preachers and close friends, John Wesley and George Whitfield, who played significant spiritual roles during this during that time often found themselves in sharp disagreement with each with, with each other both men led countless thousands to the faith in Christ but they were all but they were at odds theologically that's going to happen sometimes we're not always going to be on the same page um, I, you've heard me said it before and nobody has perfect theology and so we're because we don't have right theology all the time we're going to have disagreement on it sometimes um, 
yeah, they were still good friends. And I want to note that as good as the friends they were, they did have sharp disagreement on certain things. Then it says this, Whitfield had traveled to, an, to American colonies and when he returned to England, the men had a heated confrontation. Wesley wrote of the event, he told me that he and I preached two different gospels and therefore he could not only, he, he would not only not join with or give me the right the right hand of fellowship, but was resolved publicly to preach against me and um, and brother Charles wheresoever we he he preached at all. So there was this disagreement so much so that during the middle of this revival, that he's like I'm I'm going to make sure and pe- make sure that people are aware that I disagree with you, and he did that. But this is interesting. So it says before Whitfield came to the end of his life. He asked Wesley to preach his funeral sermon. So he disagreed with Wesley to the point where he was like, I'm not gonna I'm gonna make sure people know what I feel about your theology. But now, because of their relationship and connection, he's actually asking a person he disagrees with to officiate his funeral. I want you to do to, to my funeral sermon. So Wesley agreed, and while there, a woman approached and asked, Dear dear Mr. Wesley, do you expect to see dear Mr. Whitfield in heaven? After a lengthy pause, Wesley responded solemnly, No, ma- no madam. Ah, I was afraid you would, you would say so, she said. But Wesley continued, Do not misunderstand me. George Whitfield will stand so near to the throne that one like me will never get a glimpse of him. Um, pretty powerful statement of those two men. And, and I think it kind of connects and relates to where we're at today in this passage. You have um, these people who disagree. And I don't think that they disagree to the point where the, where it's an essential, like a salvation issue. Like we, they believe the same things. It was just a matter of who they work with. And um, I think sometimes, again, we got to understand that there are times where we disagree, um, where we can come together and we can work those things out. And I think that's the first, always the first thing you try to do: try to work out your disagreements and try to get of one mind and one heart, um, like they did in the beginning of Acts chapter fifteen. And because of that, they were able to come to a, a conclusion that was from the Lord. And, um, you know, they recognized that the Holy Spirit, that, that these Greeks were already saved and they were already filled with the Holy Spirit and there were already miracles happening. Why would we put the law on them? They had to come to that conclusion together. But now we have Paul later on and Barnabas disagreeing. They went their separate ways, yet their ministries cost, cost, cross paths because we know that John Mark worked with Paul over the years. So um, we know that there was still connection there. There was still relationship there. You can disagree, but not be disunified. You can still do the mission the Lord has you, but sometimes there's people who you can come to a conclusion, let's, let's move forward in agreement. And sometimes it's like, okay, it's maybe better that we separate on our mission that we're on. Um, and I think that the Lord will give you discernment on that, help you to understand and know when to do that. Um, you can still love each other, still care for each other, but there's times where, and I don't know if you guys have been in that place where you've had disagreement and it wasn't resolved. Um, I I know that I've had that happen, and um, but made clear that I still had affection and love for the, the person, and um, we disagreed, but we didn't work together any longer in ministry. Um, but I, we our paths crossed. We still connected, still um, served the Lord where we're at, and there's, God still uses um, them where they're at. He still uses me where I'm at. Um, there's no hard feelings. We just understood we couldn't we couldn't go forward together. Um, sometimes God will use that kind of situation almost in a sense to spur separation, not separation spiritually, but because I want you to go do this and I want you to go do this. So I want you to, you're going to do two different ministries that are important. And um, in order to do that, you have to separate because you both have the same mission, same heart, same mindset. So separating now spreads the gospel even more. And I believe that's what happens in this passage. They might've had a sharp disagreement. And they separated, but both went on a mission. They both did amazing things and crossed paths at different times, um, as we see in Galatians and different places. So um, that's the main thought today. The main thought is uh, it's it's okay to disagree. It's going to happen sometimes. Um, what happens after you disagree is what matters. When you disagree, do you try to work it out? Do you try to come to um, the same conclusion? 
that's the first step. And if you don't, and if you can't do that, it's okay. As long as you still don't have bitterness or anger that you separate and you do the work that God's called you to do and that you still love one another and aren't bitter and aren't angry because those things are, are going to affect your heart and your spirit. You will lose your effectiveness if you did that. I don't believe that either Paul or Barnabas would have been effective in their ministry and fruitful the way that they were had they had bitterness in their heart or anger in their heart towards one another. I think it was just simply a matter of choice of who we work with, and that was it. And um, and I think that's okay. So um, that's it today. I just want to share that a little bit. I think it's important that we... Um, don't beat ourselves up, right? When we think, when we think that we're, when we realize number one that, you know, I read that quote one more time that the best of men are just still are still just men at best. So um, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make bad decisions. You're going to have bad theology at time, and that's why we work together. We sharpen each other. We help each other with our theology. We help each other with our, our way of thinking. We help each other go from being orphans to heirs and having that mindset of an heir rather than a mindset of an orphan because we're no longer that. Um, we get rid of some of those things. We work out some some of those kinks, but sometimes um, we're going to disagree on certain things that um, that doesn't mean you're going to hell and I'm going to heaven or I'm going to heaven or I'm going to hell and you're going to heaven. It doesn't mean those kind of things. It just means um, we got to separate. You go your way, I go my way, and we're going to do what God's called us to do, but still have affection towards each other. Still be praying for one another. Still be, uh, still connect um, at times. Still do those kind of things. Um, just recognizing um, that when you're on, a, on a, doing a work of ministry, when you're pursuing the Lord and, and the church is working together, we have to have the same mar- mindset and the same heart and uh, all the same things. And if we don't, then it's better that um, we work with those who we can have the same heart and the same mindset so that we can be effective. This, I don't hope that makes sense to all of you today. Um, but um, I think that's important. The first thing we try to do, always resolve, always try to resolve the disagreement, always try to find if we can come to a conclusion um, on the same page. And... Um, and sometimes you won't, and, and sometimes you won't, and it's not a big deal, and you can still work together. Sometimes you won't, like Paul and Barnabas, and you have to you have to go your separate ways. But um, I do like the fact that Paul later on requested um, John called Mark because the fact that he didn't want to work with him now and did later shows that he had a change of heart, right? He had a change of heart, and so he was willing to, um, even though he was just a mere man, he was willing to change his heart and work with somebody he didn't want to work with before. Um, maybe he saw a difference in John called Mark, but maybe he, maybe it was just that he had a change of heart. So, um, anyway, I'm going to open up for a time of prayer and you can give comments on what I said, um, any, any time, any week, um, whether you agree or disagree or you think I'm crazy, it's okay if you think I'm crazy. Um, I, I, my favorite, one of my favorite sayings is that I may be nuts, but at least I'm screwed onto the right bolt. So, uh, um, it is, uh, it is sometimes we, um, all have disagreement or have whatever. So it's okay that you share whatever your thoughts are on any of these lives that we do. Um, I won't be mad at you. So, yep. Yeah, you got to handle your disagreements. Amen. All right, any prayer request? And you can continue to put comments in there anytime you want to. But um, if you have any prayer requests, we'll pray for those now. And um, just continue to pray. We will have um, prayer tonight again. So um, just a reminder, prayer at three different locations, and it's been going really well. And um, you know, prayer moves the moves the hand of God. But um, and that's an important thing. We have to we have to pray because we want to see God move. And um, it, prayer unifies the church. Prayer um, really just opens the doors. Uh, you know, we, we we get up, we get on our knees so that we can stand when, at, the, at the right time and do the work we're called to do. So. Um, let's pray I'm just going to begin to pray all right hallelujah Lord we thank you for your presence right now we thank you that you're here with us and that um, as we come together and pray in agreement Lord that you are moving um, in our midst and that you you said if any of us come together touching any one thing two or three together touching any one thing there you are in the midst and Lord so we pray according to your will today that you would move in power and that you would have your way. And, and where there is sickness, you would bring healing. Where there is pain, you would bring comfort. Um, where there is sorrow, you would bring joy. And we pray in Jesus' name just for a, a move of your spirit in our lives, a move of your spirit in uh, at the net, a move of your Holy Spirit in our communities. Lord, we just want to see an outpouring of your spirit where you have your way and you move in your power and we're simply just allowing you to use us, Lord. Um, 
even in spite of our, our failures, even in spite of our struggles, even in spite of our sometime disagreements, Lord, um, that you would use us anyway, Lord, in spite of ourselves, that you would use us for your glory. Matter of fact, I, sometimes because of our weakness, that's where you show where you're seen the strongest, Lord. And so um, you use that. And so I pray today you would do that in us, Lord. We need you today. Lord, I pray right now for um, Linda, who is having heart surgery. Lord, we pray right now in Jesus' name that as she goes through this heart surgery, Lord, that you would guide the hands of those who are the surgeons, that you would give them uh, the ability to have steady hands and to be able to do a, not only a good job but an incredible job, that she would not only um, come out of that surgery well, but it would be like she bounces back quickly and it's 100% health would restore to her body. And Lord, you would just help her through that process. It's a... It's a scary thing, but at the same time, you give us the ability in the, in, in the earth to have gifts and talents to be able to be used. And um, so we pray that you would help those doctors and that you would touch her body um, and that she would distress and, and all of those feelings of emotions involved, Lord, she would not feel those right now. Instead, she would feel peace. Um, Lord, we pray right now for Bill and his lung cancer and um, pray also for Marsha. Um, both of them being ill, Lord, and we've been praying already, and we're just going to continue to pray for Bill and Marsha for complete healing um, in Jesus' name. Um, we know that you're you're the great physician, Lord. You're the ultimate healer, Lord. That's who you are, and so we just depend on you. And in many cases here, Lord, today we depend on you for your healing power. We can we depend on you for your outpouring of love and peace and comfort right now for both of them, and that you would heal and touch their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Pray right now for Rob and his children's health that you would uh, bring them to complete health. I don't know what's going on there, if they have a, an issue or not, but whether they do or not, I pray health for them right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. We continue to pray for Barb. Lord, I know it's been a rough road for her and for the family, Lord. So first of all, we pray for the family to just have comfort and peace right now. And um, and secondly, we pray for Barb, that she would have no nausea today, that she would have no pain, um, that she would be at peace and at rest today, Lord. And we just continue to ask for healing, Lord, in her body. Um, we we have not because we ask not. And so, Lord, we ask, we ask, and we will ask all the way, um, just believing you and trusting you and asking you for healing in her body. And for, we're just praying for an incredible testimony to come um, out of this situation, Lord, a testimony of your goodness, a testimony of your healing, of your power, um, of, of your you know just everything that you are to us. Lord, we pray that you would bring a testimony in Jesus' name. We pray also for Dan for mental health. We've been praying that for that as well. And uh, we just pray right now in Jesus' name, first of all, that you would give him a clear conscience, a clear mind, that he'd be able to, be able to uh, think and, and understand clearly, and that you would speak to him, that you'd draw him close to you, that he would come to know you, Lord. He would give his life over to you today, we pray in Jesus' name, that wherever he's at right now, by the power of your spirit, that you would minister to him. It's Linda's mom who's having heart surgery. Um, yeah, we pray right now for that again, Lord. Just pray pray for the right person, Lord, that Linda's mom who's having heart surgery, that you touch her body and that she would be whole today in Jesus' name. Lord, I agree with uh, Jeff on this. We need your Holy Spirit. We need the power of your Spirit in our lives. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would, just uh, every one of us here, who's online, those who are a part of the net, those who are in the church in general. Lord, I pray in these days where they're crazy um, and can appear to be out of control, Lord, I pray that your church would be more aware of your presence, that we would be filled to overflowing, Lord God, um, that we would just know your know your power and know your presence, not only in our services, but in our lives daily, Lord, that every single day we would have encounters with you that transform us more and more and more, that make us more like you, that you would give us the discernment that we need to be guided and have your direction. God, we need um, your direction. We need your will to be done in our lives. Um, and Lord, we need to be in a position where we can hear you. So I pray that we would, first of all, position ourselves, position our hearts, that we would allow ourselves not only time of prayer, but a time to quietly sit in your presence so that we can learn to listen. And that as you speak to us and you give us direction, that we would be willing to be obedient no matter what it costs, no matter what it is you want us to do. Um, we want your your will to be done more than anything else, above anything else, Lord. Um, we pray for Amy and for emotional healing in her today, that you would bring healing 
100% to her in Jesus' name, and that she would feel um, just 100% herself, Lord, and, and that you would move in her life and that you would show her who you are and there would be no more emotional issues, Lord. Um, pray for Lynn, who has an auto autoimmune dis disorder, Lord. We pray right now in Jesus' name that uh, you would touch her body. And whatever that disorder is, whatever is causing the immune system to not be strong, it's, it's a. I pray that you just go right to the source of that, that by the blood of Christ, you would bring healing to her body um, right now, that her immune system would begin to work perfectly and do what it's supposed to do and that she would not any longer feel the effects of this, that we just believe right now by the power of Jesus and the blood of, of Christ that you will be healing to her right now. Um, it's by your stripes that we were healed. That's past tense. We believe it for every prayer that we're praying. Lord, we believe that your healing is available, and um, and we just want to submit to you and ask you in prayer, Lord, that you would bring healing to all of these, Lord, that we've prayed for today. I pray for my wife Cassie and her wrists, Lord, to continue to hurt. As I dropped her off at work today, Lord, she's in pain in her wrist. So I just pray, we don't know what's wrong, but we just pray you would touch her right now in Jesus' name. Um, also knowing that she had found out she's anemic and um, has iron deficiencies as well as a kidney stone and a um, little bit of hair coming out because of this deficiency. So we pray right now in Jesus' name that you would touch her body right now and bring healing to her, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. And we just declare healing over Cassie and over every single one of these today, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are, 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 we are fully... Um, in full agreement uh, together and we believe you and your, we know that there's nothing that you cannot do and so that's why we surrender to you Lord today um, Lord, we pray for Sherry whose son was killed in a car accident the other night Lord uh, that's a terrible situation and I know that um, just talking to parents who have lost children over the years how devastating it is and it's, it's, it's terrible to lose anybody but to lose your child is devastating beyond um even what most can comprehend. So Lord, we pray right now for Sherry, for the whole entire family, that you would give them peace right now, comfort more than anything else, that you'd pour out your comfort to them and your love to them, and that um, people would be around them who would be able to just love on them and care for them. And Lord, she would learn during a season more to depend on you. I don't know if she knows you or not, but she would, if she doesn't, that she would come to know you. And if she does know you, Lord, that she would lean into that connection, Lord, lean into your presence and allow you um, to strengthen her right now. Um, I just pray for her and her entire family for comfort and peace. And um, Lord, that you would just bring healing to them right now, Lord, like only you can do. Um, such a devastating situation, Lord. I just pray that you would heal their hearts today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for um, every single person who is a part of the Fisherman's Net. Um, Pray blessing over them. Pray favor over them in their lives. Pray that they just see you supernaturally move by your spirit in their lives, but also see you move um, in, in the area of blessing, Lord, that you would pour out blessing and opportunity, Lord, that as they are obedient to you with their lives, that you would show favor um, in them. And Lord, we pray that, that for all of us in the church, that for our kids and our grandkids, we continue to pray for them, Lord, that they would come to know you, that they would, um, that those who are prodigals, Lord, that they would just have an encounter with you that would change their life forever, Lord, that they would come back to you now, Lord, that you would draw them by your spirit. And for those who are, are, are ministering, continue to, to, to use them, continue to move in their lives. For those who are still close to home and serving in ministry, Lord, we pray as, as we believe, and I believe with all my heart, that you're going to draw them home to be a legacy, um, to be part of the legacy that their parents left and are building. Their parents have done so many great things here. And uh, Lord, we just believe this is going to go on for not, not for temporarily, but for a long time. And the kids who know the heart, who have been a part of it, Lord, draw them back home. Lord, we thank you right now in Jesus' name for that. You're going to move in um, nothing we want more as parents, grandparents, is to see our kids serving you, loving you, and following you, and, and carrying the torch, Lord, that we pass to them. So we pray in Jesus' name that they would. Um, that would happen, Lord. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the power of your spirit moving in our lives and in our church. Pray for the church worldwide um, that you would move in incredible ways, Lord, that we, there would be just a fresh move of your spirit that happens in every single church, um, and, and that we would just see churches filled with people um, that, who are giving their life to you, Lord. And, and, and I believe the world is is in a place where even though they push back on the church, they're desperate, they need looking for something, and Lord, you are that, that what they need. So pray that they would um, just fill the churches with those who are being saved, 
Lord God, and um, that we would just see an outpouring of your spirit worldwide in the day that we live in now, Lord Jesus, we pray. Pray right now that you would bring revival, an outpouring of your spirit into the government, Lord, um, that they would, um, those who strongly oppose you, um, Lord, that you would um, shut the mouth of every single um, enemy of your kingdom, Lord, that you would, that you literally would get in the way of everything they try to do to stop the church from advancing. But Lord, that you would also draw them, draw every person in Congress, every person in the Senate, the President of the United States, every single one of them, Lord, draw them in Jesus' name. Draw them right now to you, Lord. Um, we pray, we believe, Lord, there's so many in, in, in politici politicians and whatnot, Lord, that there's no way things will ever change unless they have an encounter with you. So we pray they have an encounter with you right now in Jesus' name. We declare, we pray it, and we pray what happened. Um, even where they're at today, Lord, they're in their offices, they're in meetings, whatever it is right now, Lord, that you would just, they have a revelation of who you are. We pray for our nation to rise up as a strong, godly nation once again, but we pray we, you do it through the power of your spirit and that you move in the lives of those even who are far from you, Lord. We thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen, Charlene. God is good. Whew. I don't know if there's any more prayer requests, but um, if not, then I will let you go with the rest of your day. Um, again, if you have an opportunity tonight, we only have a couple more weeks left of our prayer, Wednesday night prayer, before we go into normal small groups in the fall. Um, so I'm going to encourage you, pray. Um, get to somebody. Get either, you know, we have it at our house. Uh, and I know that um, you're going to see um, at the park, Grant Park, um, as well. Um Sorry, I'm having sinus issues. I'm gonna have to go take some of that stuff um, that Charlene was talking about. <laughs> Get some of that that stuff to help my sinuses. But there's three different locations, and you can see it in a bulletin. And um, love to have as many people out as possible for prayer the next few weeks, so we can really just be praying in agreement and seeking the face of the Lord. Um, we're not we're not seeking His hands. You know, we don't need things from Him. We just need Him. So we're seeking His face, relationship, and connection. And, um, and that's what we want, because when we seek his face and we know him, he moves in power. And all these things then are added um, that we need. So let's uh, meet tonight at um, 6.30 at my house. I believe it's 6.30 at all locations. Um, so we'll meet and we'll pray tonight and intercede. And so other than that, we will see you Sunday. Um, look forward to it. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.